Hello, welcome to this edition of the Telescope Makers Workshop. My name is Francis O'Reilly and I will host today's segment. Today, we are speaking about testing polished reflective optics, specifically parabolic concave mirror substrates. I'll discuss the practical aspects of the Foucault test and the Rocky test. We will also discuss the past history of the test, the positive and negatives, and we'll discuss the practical application of the test. Before we do that, I'd like to discuss a little bit about light and the nature of light and how it travels. For our purposes, light is an electromagnetic field that travels in waves. We often refer to waves of light, however, waves are geometric uh, niceties that point in the direction of the travel of light waves and are normal to the actual wave. Light travels in three dimensions. However, we're going to, for a moment to think of it in two dimensions. Think of a pond on a calm morning. The surface is as smooth as glass. Now envision someone dropping a pebble in the pond. Imagine the ripples expanding outward from the point of impact of the pebble in ever widening circles. The radius of the circles increases at a fairly constant rate as the amplitude of the ripple becomes smaller as it recedes from the center. The relationship is a geometric function. Now at a third dimension, change the pond to space and change the pebble to an atom into which energy has been introduced in the center of a sphere. That is how light travels. When light is reflected by a spherical surface back to its source from a point that is close to the light, that spherical reflecting surface will reflect the light directly back to the source. Jack, excuse me, that's my dog drinking his water. But when that light is very far from the reflecting surface, the expanding wave of light appears to be a flat wall of light because the sagitta of the curve of the wave intercepted becomes so small as to be imperceptible. Imagine that you're looking at a curve with the center of the radius barely, that's my other dog, where the center of the uh, sphere is a light year away or four light years away. That expanding curve, that expanding sphere, when you're intercepting it with a mirror that's eight inches in diameter, is going to appear to be flat. In order to focus light to a point where, as far as we can measure, the light is coming in as a straight, flat wave, we must have a different type of surface. A sphere won't do it. That will reflect the light to different points. What we need for a simple telescope with a Newtonian optical tube assembly, named after Sir Isaac, is a parabola. A parabola is an open curve with one focus when light is approaching it from a distant source as a flat wave. Think of a circle and imagine the circle being stretched. As soon as you begin to stretch the circle, it becomes an ellipse and has two foci. Continue to stretch the ellipse further and it becomes a parabola. And then it only has one foci and it's open. Stretch it even further and you get a hyperbola. All of these curves are useful in various types of telescope design. However, for the simple parabola, uh, the simple Newtonian telescope, the parabola is the one that is most commonly used. For other types of telescopes, for example, a Cassegrain, you might have a parabola and a convex hyperboloid to focus the light. Other telescopes use differing types. The Hubble Space Telescope, it was a Ritchie Chrétien, used different types of curves also. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about focusing light with a parabola. A parabola has an infinite number of different radii when light is shined at it from a point source. The Foucault test attempts to quantify the curve of the parabola 
by measuring the location of the foci at various points. Most amateur telescope makers measure the uh, foci at three different points. Uh, that's done by masking off the mirror so that only three zones show the center, which is going to be a reference, a zone at about 70% of the distance from the center of the mirror to the edge, and that zone is actually uh, comprised of a, an infinite number of zones because to measure it you have to have a slit in your what we call a Coudair screen, screen of about uh, a quarter inch wide, and then an edge zone which is also about a quarter inch wide. You measure those three zones, and if they're at the right place using the equation of um, the radius of the zone squared divided by two times the radius of the mirror, uh, and that will give you the location of where each zone is supposed to be um, from the, uh, with reference to the center. In any event, you measure the, the foci of these three zones, the center, which is your, uh, which is your reference, 70% zone and the edge zone, and you compare that to the computed value, and then you take your cooter screen away and look at the mirror and see if the curve is relatively smooth. And uh, you'll make a determination as to how you're doing with respect to focusing your light and if your curve is appropriate. Uh, there are other tests that are available, but initially we're going to be talking about the one everybody hears about, the Foucault test. The Foucault tester that I have is a very interesting device. I purchased it on uh, Cloudy Nights. There's a million designs for them where you can buy them made or you can make one. It's not very difficult. Uh, the um, tester I have is a very interesting design. I purchased this particular one on Cloudy Nights, although I have several others in my basement, some that I've made, uh, some that I've bought, some that were available commercially. Um, it's really a very simple design. You can also find it on the Stellafane website or any one of a number of other amateur telescope making websites. Uh, this particular one has a stage where that holds the knife edge and the light uh, apparatus. It's traveled, it's traveled back and forth. It's controlled by a turning knob and a one quarter twenty uh, threaded rod with a knob that turns it. It's also travel up and travels up and down on a one quarter twenty knob, which is not nearly as important. Uh, it rides on a Teflon bar with a couple of pieces of plywood and a V holding it together. It's a very nice design. It was uh, designed by Dave Pant, and I purchased it from him. The light source is powered by three AAA batteries. I can flip the light on or off. I've got it on, and then I can flip on the test light or um, another light that we use that is used just to locate the uh, mirror. And that's collimating and aligning the Foucault test is probably the most difficult part. If you have an optical bench or you can make an optical bench, that's usually a very good way to resolve uh, any issues that you might otherwise have. Uh, there is a place in the back to attach a dial gauge if you're of a mind to do so. You can put a uh, dial indicator or an electronic indicator on there and you can actually measure the points at which the light cuts off. The problem with the uh, Foucault test is that determining the zones where you have um, and, and you, t you determine that you're at the focus of a particular zone by the zone blacking out is very subjective and it's very difficult to get repeatable readings. In theory, the Foucault test was a brilliant theory, a brilliant design, come up by, uh, designed by Leon Foucault, I believe it was in about 1858. Uh, it was incorporated by Henry Draper, uh, and he was the one who actually came up with uh, the measurements, and uh, he was an amateur, American amateur astronomer, a uh, gentleman amateur astronomer who lived in Hastings on Hudson, New York, about uh, 35 miles from where I am right now in Brewster, New York. Uh, the idea is a brilliant idea. It was then uh, modified. Uh, when Giovanni Ronchi came up with his famous Ronchi screen, that being screens about 100 150 lines per inch, where instead of looking and trying to figure out where the knife edge cuts off, you can take a look and see how lines curve, and that will help you determine 
whether or not you have a parabola. You can also look at uh, various zones in the mirror a little bit easier. Probably the best test that's come out so far is uh, a double pass autocollimation test, which is similar to the Foucault test. However, you have a optical flat, a cord optical flat that you look through, uh, that you look through and uh, use the Foucault test from there. And instead of testing at the radius of curvature of the optic, you're testing at the focal point of the optic. The uh, Foucault test is a test that uh, involves the radius of curvature. Now that's fine. I'm building one telescope that's a 12.5 uh, inch f12. The radius of curvature of that mirror is 25 feet. That's big. 150 inch uh, focal length. That's big. It's a scary telescope. It's 12.5 feet uh, long from the uh, optic to the um, to the focal point. That's that's just a huge telescope. And to test that at radius of curvature 25 feet away is very difficult. So the uh, Foucault test was designed. Many, many fine mirrors have been made with Foucault test over the years. Uh, it's no longer the primary way for an aperture telescope maker to test a uh, telescope. It's probably acceptable and many people do it, but I really highly recommend uh, making an optical flat and uh, coring it and uh, testing with a autocollimator if you're going to be making more than one telescope mirror. Well, that's it for this edition of the Telescope Makers Workshop. We'll be back again soon. Signing off, Francis O'Reilly from Brewster, New York. Today is April 1st, 2012. Happy April Fool's Day. Oh, it's Palm Sunday also, which is far more important. Have a blessed year.